Hello, uh, fellow comrades, my friends on Facebook, uh, this is uh, Brother Alfred Afo, or Rabbi Afo. Uh, I want to share with you some few information or discuss some few issues with uh, you. You know, uh, I've been seeing the way people pray, and I think that is high time uh, Christians we change the way we pray. In fact, Paul alluded to it by saying that I think it's it's in James, if I'm if I'm not wrong, say we pray and do not get because we pray a mess. When we say a mess, it means we are praying wrongly, and that is the truth of the matter. A lot of people are saying prayers, all the prayers they are saying is wrong. I want to uh, explain some concept here. You see, the human brain is made out of three parts. We have the conscious mind, the subconscious, and the superconscious mind. Now, it is the conscious mind we use in thinking. And then the subconscious mind acts like a storehouse or a brain bank. So, it means that what you deliberate on with your conscious mind regularly is what seeps into the subconscious mind. Once it enters your subconscious mind, it becomes a reality in your life. What I am saying is that if you keep on praying and you are mentioning things which are of negative nature, the subconscious mind sometimes is not able to differentiate between things. So what happens is that instead of you receiving the positive aspect, you receive the negative. For example, someone who wants to pass an exam and is praying regularly that he should not fail the exam. The word fail, 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 fail impresses on the subconscious mind. And once it's, it gets to the subconscious mind, it seeps to the uh, superconscious mind, which is the God given spirit in us. And it becomes a manifestation. Because the scripture also says that whatsoever ye desire, if ye pray, believe that ye shall receive it, and ye shall receive it. The word believe is in two parts be and leave. So it means that if you desire, for example, a house of your own, what you have to do is that you have to create a condition that the subconscious mind will accept that truly you are ready for the house. And it gives you another way of going about is to impress the subconscious mind with a blueprint or make pictures of what you desire before affirming what you desire you understand so uh, if i wanted a car what i have to do is to create a mental picture of myself driving the car i should be able to send have the even feel the scent or smell the, the fresh leather of the car by so doing i'm creating a mental imprint upon my subconscious mind for it to uh, to manifest that is why he said that be and live as if it was that. Let me share a, a small testimony with you. The last time I wanted to build my house, I didn't own a land. I didn't have the money for a land now to build. Someone gave me a, a few money. The, the money I received was very small. So it couldn't do anything. It couldn't even buy a bag of cement. So I bought a headband. When I sent it home, my wife asked me, what, what about this headband? I said, look, it is this headband I'm going to use to build my house. You understand? It's imprinted on my subconscious mind. And that is the very, very headband I used in building my small house. So what I'm trying to say is that let us stop praying negativity. Christians are fond of mentioning negative words. The more you mention, you are rather aggravating your situation. What, it is better to be giving thanks. You understand? Oh Lord, I thank you for this money. I thank you for this wealth. I thank you for this car. I praise your name. It is better than to uh, be praying in the negative. Another form of prayer I find very wrong is when Christians pray against their enemies. Christ was very specific on it. He said that let us pray for those who persecute us. So how come this uh, back to send that term? It is not scripture. It is unbiblical. The master himself has said, let's pray for. You say, I won't pray for. I will pray against. He had a very good reason why he said, let's pray for. Because even on Calvary, he was praying for his persecutors. And then the student must walk where the master has walked. The life of Christ himself 
It was just a path. He was charting for us to tread. Where the master walk, the student did but to walk. Fellow brothers and sisters, my comrades, I think this morning I've been a blessing to some of you. And thank you, those of you who have listened to me. And I hope we'll change our way of praying. Thank you and bye.